Hey guys, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Mr. Riedel. I know this video is going to go to all the 6th grade science classes, so not just my students. I thought that I would start this lesson off with a joke of the day, so that we can get started off on the right foot. So take a look at this joke. It is a teacher DNA strand, and three student DNAs, and the teacher is saying, Okay class, let's all say our alphabet. And then the little kid DNA strands are saying, A, T, C, G, A, T, C, G, A, T, C. Because <laughs> those are the, get it? Because those are the only four letters that they know. Four base pairs of a DNA strand. Okay, so uh, the genetics unit. Just a quick recap on genetics. Uh, first of all, what is genetics? Oh, yes. Do you want to say hi to my students? On camera. That's the camera right there. Say hi. Hi. We're recording a video right now. Okay. Thanks for knocking. Bye. Okay. So where were we? We were talking about genetics unit. So um, I love genetics, you guys. Um, when I was in high school, I remember learning about genetics and it became my passion. Like I was so fascinated with DNA and how small it is, how long it is, and how small it is in every single one of our little cells in our whole body. All those instructions that are packed into such a tiny little molecule um, can make who, us who we are. And so genetics is, is the study of heredity and like how traits are passed down from our parents. So understanding how we get our DNA from our parents we often look like our parents and we act like our parents because of the fact that we get DNA and genes from our parents. I was just absolutely fascinated by that and um, I actually went into college planning on studying genetics and I wanted to be a geneticist. I wanted to go into research and learn all about it. And, and so that made me think of uh, college and I wanted to show you a few pictures of what I did in college because I actually worked in a biology lab as a work-study student and so let's take a look at some of these. They're kind of funny. So here's a picture of me. Uh, I remember taking this photo. My mom took this picture of me. Uh, I was giving her and my dad a tour of my lab and where I worked. And um, she said, oh, I have to take a picture of you to remember this. And I remember I was so annoyed at her when she took this picture of me. Uh, in front of my lab bench, and um, even though I was annoyed at the time, I'm, I'm still thankful now, looking back on it, that uh, she took the photo. Uh, so anyway, here's uh, the picture of me. My lab notebook is right there. I remember this is a PCR machine, which is like really, really expensive. My pipetter right there, and all my um, vials, and I have my notebooks and my lab gloves and everything. Oh, and in the back there, agarose gel electrophoresis, and here's a scan of my first agarose gel that I made. In our lab, we were studying malaria. I remember there are like different genes that have different lengths, and the size of the genes, if it's bigger, it doesn't go through the gel as fast, and the smaller it is, it goes farther. Anyway, this is more high school stuff that you'll learn in biology class in high school. Here's another picture of my lab. On the left here is a freezer, and this is like a minus 60 degree, 60 degrees below zero. Um, so it's super, super cold, and that's where we kept all the malaria samples, the blood samples that were infected with malaria. There's a um, centrifuge way in the back by the window. And here's a nice view of Seattle, because I went to college up in Seattle, and um, this used to be called Seattle Biomedical Research Institute. And uh, we got this awesome view every day. Uh, this is the culture hood room, and this is where we took uh, actual blood that was infected with malaria. We took samples of it and um, grew cultures of it inside of these hoods. And because we didn't, we weren't allowed to breathe on it. It wouldn't be contaminated with, you know, what we were breathing, which is kind of appropriate right now. Like if you can imagine scientists working on coronavirus and stuff like that. They wouldn't want to infect the samples that they're working on, so they would use these hoods in order to keep it clean and not contaminated. I remember going in here, and I remember I was really nervous because of the fact that, like, I was holding blood samples infected with malaria, and, like, if I took a needle and I stabbed myself with it, or, like, I accidentally tripped or fell or, or I did something, you know, irresponsible, then I could get infected with malaria. So 
that's why there's that caution sign and you had to be really super careful when you're working with those samples. And then one last picture is of my college dorm room. <laughs> uh, here's my college dorm room. As you can see, uh, on the floor there, we ha have the original Xbox and a Nintendo GameCube that we played with. Uh, that's what we played when I was in college. Uh, and I, as you can see, I still have my Pez dispensers on display up in my college dorm room, just like I have in my classroom right now. <laughs> so they've been with me for a long time. All right, so after that little walk down memory lane, um, let's get to today's lesson. So far, what you have learned in genetics is uh, you've watched a few videos, getting an idea of what genetics is. It's the study of genes and DNA, how parents pass on traits to their kids, and um, how you get characteristics that are similar. And there's some traits that you get from the environment around you that you just learn but other traits that you just get from your parents. So there's a difference between there. So that's what you guys have learned so far about genetics. And today we are going to do an inventory of the traits that we have. And these are easily observable traits that uh, some people have and some people don't have. So we're going to take this inventory, which is just making a list basically. And you're gonna do it by taking a form. And then we're gonna look at the results of everybody. All right, so let's take a look at this. So right now I'm looking at this uh, website. It is Observable Human Characteristics. Uh, and it says we are all unique. Even though we share some characteristics with our peers and with our family members, every one of us has a unique combination of traits. Some traits are controlled by genes that pass from parents to children, and others are acquired through learning. But most of them are influenced by a combination of genes and environmental factors. Below are some examples of variable traits that are easily to that are easy to observe. Okay, so the first one is earlobe attachment. So everybody, hold on to your earlobe. This is your earlobe, and um, you might have to look into a mirror or look into you know a selfie camera or something um, to see if your earlobes are attached. So you can read this these two paragraphs about it if you want. But basically, what it's asking is: is your the bottom of your earlobe is, is it attached like this? or is it unattached? Um, mine is unattached because you can kind of go like this with it. You can move it all around. This is an unattached earlobe. But some people have attached earlobes where the base of it is um, connected. Okay, so that's earlobe attachment. Tongue rolling is the next one. So some people can't do this with their tongue. Can you do that? So take a look into a mirror and look at yourself. Can you roll your tongue? like that. And some people think that they're doing it, doing it, but they're not really doing it. So you'll have to look into a mirror and make sure. I think I can do it. I, let me see. Yes, I can do it. And so um, if you can or can't do that, you'll indicate that on the form. Dimples. Dimples are small natural indentations on the cheek. So this guy in this picture, he has dimples and it's not the same thing as this. It, they're further away. So let me take a look here. I, I don't think I have dimples. Because it's not talking about when you smile. It's not talking about this indentation here. Dimples are like further back. Like in this picture uh, that um, I'm looking at right here. Um, so do you have dimples or not? Uh, handedness. This is like what I was talking about before. I'm left-handed. So what hand do you write with? Left or right? Freckles. Do you have freckles? Uh, I do not have freckles. Usually freckles are around here. So um, indicate whether or not you have freckles. So curly hair is a little bit confusing. Let's read this together. Round hair follicles make straight hair. Flattened or C-shaped hair follicles make curly hair. And oval hair follicles make wavy hair. So what this means is like the hair follicles that's inside of your skin and where the hair comes out of your skin, those are hair follicles. So there's different shapes and those different shapes produce different type of texture of hair. And it says hair texture is a continuous trait, meaning that the hair can be straight or curly or anywhere in between. So there's, it's like a spectrum. So there's like straight or curly or anywhere in between 
like wavy. My hair is kind of like wavy in the middle. It says here, um, multiple genes control hair texture and different variations in these genes are found in different populations. For instance, curly hair is common in African populations, rare in Asian populations, and in between in Europeans. So my ancestry is European, so mine is actually pretty wavy. So like if I grew out my hair, it, it'd be kind of wavy. Um, my beard is kind of wavy if I grew it out longer. And also facial hair is different than head hair. The way that it grows is different. Um, uh, so the question is, is it curly? Like, is it on this end of the spectrum? Is it like really curly? So that'll be up to you to decide. Um, for me, I would say no, because I'm like in between. The question is, are you, is your hair like really curly? Okay. Uh, hand clasping. I find this one interesting. So when you put everybody put your hands apart like this and then put them together like that, clasp them together. And, you know, it seems like a normal thing to do, but some people clasp their hands differently than other people. Right now, my right thumb is on top of my left thumb. So it is over. So the right thumb is on top of the left. Some people, with, when they clasp together, they put their left thumb over their right thumb. So which do you do? Do you do left on the top or right on the top? For me, it's natural to do right on the top. Next one is hairline shape. Hairline shape uh, is kind of, a, kind of a gray area too. It's not e always easy to tell. Um, what, when it comes to a point, when your hairline comes to a point here and it kind of goes back a little bit, that's called a, wid a widow's peak. Um, and for me, if I'm looking at my hairline, it's hard to tell too because I'm getting older and my hairline is receding a little bit because um, it does go back here a little bit um, but it doesn't really come to a point it's not like one point my whole life it's kind of been kind of flat here even though it kind of goes back with the shape of my forehead so I would say no I don't have a widow's peak but look into a mirror and, and determine whether or not you think that your hairline comes to a point so that's basically up to you, just you to be the judge of whether or not you think you have it okay and I think that's the last one yeah so go ahead and go online and take that form and you can figure out where you are at with your trait inventory and uh, then next week when we come back we're gonna have data of all the students that have done this and we're gonna look at all the students characteristics and we're going to make a graph of the results so we're gonna be able to see like I even remember doing this when I was a kid I remember seeing the results of my class and I'm like, wow, a lot of people have one trait rather than another. It is very interesting to look at everybody's results for these traits. Okay, so thanks for doing that. And um, right today is Friday. I think you're watching this on a Friday. So have a good weekend, guys. Thanks for doing your work. Thanks for hanging in there. And uh, I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.